This is going to be a column pour soap using very bright colors. I'm using Micah's from Nurture Soap Company and uh, should be in rainbow colors. For red, I'm using a mixture of raspberry red and vibrance red. That should give almost a true um, blood red color. I'm using vibrance orange, vibrance yellow, vibrance green with a little bit of alpine green added to darken it and give it a little more toward the blue shades, uh, vibrance blue, and have to look here. This is uh, Color Joy Basic Purple. I've added about a tablespoon of water to each of the mica colorants just to get them moistened before I put the soap in. And I'm not going to use them in rainbow order. I'm going to use them in contrasting color order. So I'm going to do orange, green, red, blue, yellow, purple, and repeat that. Um, I think that'll be more contrasty and therefore more attractive looking in the soap. For this soap, I'm again using a slow moving recipe. It is 20% coconut oil, 40% lard, 40% olive oil. And I have it at room temperature. My lye is also almost at room temperature. Actually, that's warm water. This is lye. So I'm going to mix this to emulsion. This is uh, uh, Nature's Garden Blood Orange, which is said not to accelerate or discolor. It smells really good. So I have approximately equal amounts of the six colors. I'll whisk them up, but I think they're probably liquid enough that I'm going to need to stick around them a little more. these to be quite a trace. I want them to stay really liquid, but I want them thoroughly blended. You can do yellow, orange, red without rinsing the blender. I'll rinse the blender and do green, blue, purple the same way. using again, a laboratory bottle with some water in it for ballast and I'm going to put it's a square bottle so I'm going to put it at a 45 degree angle to the mold so that the lobes of color should run toward the corners Try something new to me with this column pour. I'm going to do the usual radial stripes, but then I'm planning to do a spiral to finish it.
So it's starting to thicken up, but it still pours pretty well. I think this time I'm going to use nearly all of it. And I'll save just a little to uh, fix the wound that's left when the column comes out. Saving probably two tablespoons of each color. right into the center on top of each other. purple heavy so I'm going to do some of the first colors again just to finish. Actually that may be enough right there. Now I'm going to use the uh, thick end of a chopstick to do the radial stripes. I would stop right there with a column pour, and that'll be pretty. But I'm going to try a, a spiral this time, and I'm going to use the thin end of the chopstick. Just kind of spiral my way out at maybe three quarter inch intervals. Never tried this before. pretty liquid so it's, it's not too unlevel. It does have some bubbles. But I think that's good. So I'll put that into a 170 Fahrenheit oven for a couple hours uh, and um, get it hardened up and then uh, unmold it and cut it tomorrow. Here's a closer view of this soap before I put it in the oven. I'm again using my uh, pre-cut 15 bar molds so I can make nice evenly uh, sized bars with very straight sides by just pushing the knife down through those uh, miter type cuts in the mold itself. This 
soap is still soft enough that if you really pinched it, you could put a dent in it pretty easily, but it's well hard enough to take out of the mold and separate the bars to let them dry. Because this was a fairly wet recipe, 38% um, water, it's going to need several weeks to really harden these up and get them ready to use. So there are the 15 bars cut. I'm molding it over newspaper, but I'm not going to leave them on the newspaper. I'm going to move them to paper towels. I found that some newspaper inks will actually fade into the soap if you let them sit there for a long time. You end up with newsprint on your soap bar surface. Here are the finished cut bars. This uh, surface is what it looks like where um, the wall of the mold was. It's just kind of a horizontal stripe. This was also the, wall, the uh, wall of the mold. And then this is cut through the interior of the slab. So is that one. There's the top surface. I'll eventually plane that away to make it smoother and shinier. And then this was the floor of the mold. So this one has similar patterning. That one was from an entirely interior bar, so it doesn't have a mold wall side to it. That's a mold wall there. In a column pour, generally your very center bar may be your most interesting. At least it's the most complicated in its swirl pattern. And that's certainly true on this one. That's a nice bar of soap. The, the floor is not very pretty, but the rest of it is. So there's the top surface. And then here's a bar that was right next to that center bar. The center bar was just below this as we're viewing it. It's also cut the whole way around. And that very complicated surface is the side that was closest to that uh, center bar. So it's a mirror image of it, of course. Anyway, I'm pleased with this batch, and it certainly smells good with that blood orange fragrance.